Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be looking at profit satisficing, another business objective that can be used in order to satisfy all stakeholders, so stay tuned. Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at profit satisficing and really it is another business objective in the macroeconomics market structure subject where this objective in particular is used in order to satisfy stakeholders in the firm. So it's important to understand who the stakeholders are in a firm and they can include, for example, the owners of the firm, okay? It can include the managers or directors of the firm. They can include both consumers and the employees as well. It's essentially anyone who has an interest in the firm itself and therefore they're called the stakeholders. So with profit satisficing, the word itself satisfying is really about trying to um, understand the divorce of ownership control uh, and what impact that has on the different stakeholders. Each stakeholder would have a different type of interest in the outcome of the firm. So if we're looking as rational economists and we're looking to maximize our own utility, with these four stakeholders here, uh, it does also make sense that they look to maximize their own utility. And in, if we look at the stakeholders in more detail, owners look to maximize their investment and so therefore they would like to have more dividends, i.e. more profits. Managers look to uh, maximize their wages or other types of benefits they may receive from the amount of sales the company makes, which they're essentially responsible for. Consumers look to have low prices, so consumers essentially want low prices to maximize their benefit. And employees who work for the company, again, look to uh, maximize their wages or any type of benefits they may receive. So fringe benefits like company cars or uh, a laptop or access to gyms or creches for their children. So these four stakeholders, there are many more, but these four stakeholders here look to maximize their benefits and to maximize their utility in order to increase their own welfare. The diagram for this is fairly straightforward. It's again a profit maximization diagram, but the output level is a bit different. So what we have to consider here is a sacrifice that's taking place in profit satisficing. So if we draw the diagram, and what we need to do is draw the standard uh, supernormal profit diagram. So we need our marginal revenue curve. Okay. We need our average revenue and our demand curve. We need our average cost curve. And finally, we need our marginal cost curve. Okay, now again, we're looking at profit satisficing. So what we're essentially saying here is that considering all these stakeholders, how do we come to an agreement where the welfare is somewhat being increased in the short term. And so again, we always start with profit maximization as the point at which we initially started with. So if we go to where MC equals MR, which is just here, that's our profit maximization point. We take up that to the demand curve and that gives us P star. Okay, we have our cost at that point there, that's C and our output, Q star. So profit satisficing is essentially how do we now satisfy the different objectives that each one of these stakeholders would like to receive. So again, we know what owners want. They want higher dividend, more dividends. They want more profit. And this is because they want to receive that return on their investment, which makes sense. Now currently they're receiving that because profits are being maximized. So the P star C, this rectangle box here, represents the super normal profits. So shareholders are extremely happy. The owners of the firm are very happy because they're receiving the maximum amount of profits for their investments. Now managers, generally their wages are linked to the amount of sales revenue or the size of the firm. You know, obviously people that manage the firm, the greater the size of it, the more likely it, they would receive bonuses or commission or more benefit. And so managers are looking to increase output more. So we need to think about how now we can come to an agreement with these stakeholders in order to meet that. Consumers look for low prices. It's as simple as that. To maximize their welfare, we know that prices need to be low, quality needs to be high, okay? And employees need higher wages or demand higher wages. Now, obviously, this is a tricky one because 
what we're saying here is that profits need to be made for this to be considered or more likely actually sales need to be the size of the firm needs to be larger for workers to also receive the higher wages it's, it's very similar to what managers require so what do we do then what we can do initially is just lower the price we're looking to satisfy so we want to essentially meet all of these objectives so an easy way of doing that and a lot of my students struggle with trying to find the point sometimes because with sales revenue um, sorry sales volume uh, revenue maximization profit maximization there's a clear production point okay with profit satisfying what you need to do is work with the price there's no clear production point here so the best way of doing this is essentially pick up a lower price don't make it too low but make it slightly lower than what you already have okay i'm going to put that as ps so that's the price for the satisfying point now take the price across to your demand curve okay which is just there and bring that down QS and that's pretty much it that's all you really need to do now how do we now kind of evaluate this well look what's happened here by reducing the price to PS okay which is now on the demand curve output has increased to QS so you have to ask the question now who's going to benefit from this well managers will benefit because output has increased from Q star to QS so the output has gone up what that indicates is that managers will be satisfied because they are now increasing the size of the company by having a large amount of output. The price has come down to PS, so consumers are also going to benefit from this lower price. Okay, Employees may also benefit because output's gone up and profits are still being made and therefore it's likely or more likely that they'll receive um, a bonus or higher wages at some point. If we're looking to compare the amount of profit again what we'll do is look at profit maximization so that's where MC equals MR again take up the demand curve P star bring it down to the cost curve just there and you get C so this rectangle here P star A B C P star A B C is the amount of profit where we're making the maximum amount of super normal profits when we profit satisfy in order to meet the um, the need for most of our stakeholders by reducing the price to PS, our new level of profit becomes PS. Okay, that point there, we'll call it D. The cost is there, okay? And again, if we take that across, it's just slightly higher, only slightly, and we'll call that E. What's happened to our profit now? So our profit satisfying, we have PS, the rectangle PS, D, um, oh, okay. F and E. So essentially this rectangle box here. So what you notice is the level of profits have been reduced. We have sacrificed some of our super normal profits in order to meet the objectives of some of the other stakeholders in the firm. And essentially that's what we call profit satisfying. And it's the easiest way of drawing it uh, in your exam. If you're evaluating profit satisfying, it really is to discuss that the divorce of ownership control means that there are different stakeholders to satisfy. And the reason we want to profit satisfy is due to the fact that each one of those stakeholders has different objectives in order to maximize their welfare. Uh, the evaluation point here is that you're sacrificing your super normal profits. Now, if you're a large firm, you could probably afford to do this. If you're a small firm, you probably wouldn't be able to afford to do it. And in the long run, it actually may benefit the firm because by making all your stakeholders happy, it may lead to um, a more productive workforce, which could increase your output further and increase the market share of your firm, leading to long-term profits. Just to wrap up, profit satisfying is a convenient way to increase the welfare of each one of our stakeholders and still being able to maintain a level of profits, which um, would in the end of the day is needed otherwise you're at risk of uh, closing down and being taken over or being merged with a different company or another company instead so this is really simple straightforward stuff i hope you benefited from the video if you do please like and please subscribe and leave me some messages to let me know what other videos you'd like me to do